Welcome, welcome, fellas. I am your gracious game advisor, and you are now tuned into the Captain Saver Bro Show. My name is King Drake. Today we are going to talk about signs of simping. That's right. I'm going to let you know if you're a simp or not. You want to stay tuned because, you know, some of the behaviors you have, and you may not know you're simping. You know, you're in a relationship and you're simping and you don't know it, or you're out here in the world and you think you're player, you think you're pee, you think you're alpha male and you ain't. I'm going to let you know. We're going to give you the symptoms of simping. But first, um, this show is available via Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts. So if you're watching it on YouTube and you want to check it out on, uh, you know, work out to it or, you know, drive your trucks to it or whatever, you can check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, and all of the other podcast, podcast platforms. And if you want to see the video, if you are on those platforms, you can check me out on YouTube the, uh, at the, Saver, the Captain Saver Bro Show. This episode is brought to you by SaverBroAcademy.com, your one-stop shop for all your game needs. Um, all of my courses are there, and you can book a one-on-one consultation with me if you need to. So hit me up at SaverBroAcademy.com. Let me tell you something. My courses are fire. From anything you need, you want to get your confidence, you want to learn how to vet women, you want to learn how to be attractive, you want to learn how to close the deal, SaverBroAcademy.com. Just a heads up, the Ultimate Ladies Man Summit will be dropping on, um, will be open for enrollment on April 4th, so you want to stay tuned for that. About to start getting into that heavy. Um, one more thing, fellas, join the Patreon at patreon.com slash kingdreism. You can join the $5 tier. I'm about to start putting content, like, you know, videos. So if you hit me up and you say, hey, um, how do I get my ex back? I'll make a video for you and put it on the Patreon. You know, those type of, those style of videos, those infomercials or the inf- informative videos where I break down the game are going to go on Patreon from this point. Um, and I also have a hundred dollar tier where we have a biweekly meeting. So we meet twice a month and chop up game from everything from, you know, game finances, fitness, uh, fashion, the whole nine, we, we, Chop it up amongst each other. You can ask me anything you want to ask me. If you have uh, like text threads you want me to break down, you have situations that you need diagnosed by me or, you know, my, 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 you know, cause you know, I feel being there with me and shit like that, but other coaches who, who, you know, who you can benefit from the knowledge um, and other guys that's in the group who might can help you out in whatever area that you need help in. So just that's on the Patreon, a hundred dollar tier. Sign up for that today at patreon.com. Slash King Dreism. Also, guys, real quick, follow me on social media at King Dreism. K I N G D R E I S M on IG, TikTok, and Twitter. Now, today's email is a little wild. This one, this one is on the wild side. It's <laughs> fuck it. Let's get into it, y'all. I don't know what's going. I don't know what's up with y'all today, man. I don't know what's up with you guys out here in the world, but. Get your popcorn. So my man says, I'm already knowing this shit has happened before. Let me tell you guys something. Um, a lot of you guys' situation, you know, a lot of the, the basis of your situation, other people have been through, right? So my man, you know, he hit me up like, I know this happened before. But this situation, it's been three years, three and a half, four years I've been doing this. And this is the first that I've heard something like this. This is wild, right? So he says, I'm already knowing this has happened before and will most certainly happen to another guy. It will if you're not careful, right? He says, so this random chicks react to one of my Instagram posts. At first, I thought she was a fake page because she didn't have any face pics, only like quotes and nature pics. After finally seeing she had stories saved on her IG, I realized she was real. Indeed. So I reply back to her reaction. Even though we linked up that same weekend, I went to her page and we went to have drinks. After we went bowling and I took her to my place, but we didn't do anything that first night. She tells me she has an ex that is out of state back home where she used to live. Mind you, I told her I've been single for the past three years and that me and my ex are cool with no bad blood, but we don't mess around with each other. This was the truth. Two days later, she lets me hit. She is definitely my type I go for based on looks, style, and initially all around vibes. And we end up moving quick as fuck. I told her she can move in with me whenever she's ready. 
pause. Did you motherfuckers hear that? I told her she can move in with me whenever she's ready. She texts me that day. I know she texts me the next day and says she's ready. I bet she fucking is. <laughs> right? I let her move into my house in a matter of less than a week. A couple weeks go by and I tell her, hey, I know we move fast and whatnot. So I'll give you a couple more weeks to cut off any dudes you are entertaining. And I'll do the same on my end. So the couple weeks go by and I noticed she was going outside to talk on the phone, which of course I checked her about and she stopped doing that, but saved a number, but a saved number kept calling her throughout the days. She tells me it was her ex. It was some discussions behind it. One day she goes to work and she leaves her Apple watch while I'm home. I work from home. Somehow the the Apple watch rings a few times and it was her ex. And it was her ex and two other dudes. I confront her about this. Um, I confront her about this when she gets home. Come to find out, the ex has proposed to her, and she claims she didn't want to be mean and just shut him down, and claims she was letting him down easy. The other guy she claims is her male best friend. Hmm, I bet, right? It's her male best friend who calls her any time of the day. The last guy is a guy she admitted to messing around with before we met. And he also lives back home where she used to live. Meanwhile, I haven't been keeping in touch with any of the chicks I was messing with before her. But what but what she would bring up, but what she would bring up is certain little things around my place that other women have left that I didn't notice. Like one chick had wrote a letter and left it in a drawer under some under some junk that I never peeped. And there was a bobby pin in the carpet that some chick dropped or something. There was also some shades a girl left at my place at the top of my bookshelf that I didn't realize. Obviously, I was single for three years and was having a lot of girls in and out just on some vibey shit, and that's it, nothing serious. These are the things that the chick would confront me about when we would talk about the dude she kept entertaining. (laughs) Pay attention. We kept dealing with each other, giving the benefit of the doubt of moving so quickly. I never had a chick move in with me in less than a week, and she claims she's never moved in with a guy so quick. Definitely didn't believe the cap, but I wasn't going. To, but I was going against the grain. A couple months go by, and we've been arguing a lot. And one common thing she tells me is that I'm not soft enough nor emotional enough, which I have been told by my ex in the past. I eventually kick her out due to the arguing and disrespect. A week or so goes by with no communication, and she hits me up and wants to work things out. I bet she do, right? So we talked for a couple days, and we decided to try it again. The day before I ended up moving her back in, her ex finds me on IG. Only way we could have known about, only way he could have known about me was through her. He tells me, hey, are you still messing with such and such because she just left my crib? I didn't respond to him, but instead I asked her, where is she? Because he stays back home out of state where she used to live. She tells me that she is at her auntie's house who stays like 25 minutes away from me. So somebody is lying, right? I screenshot his message and I send it to her. She tells me he is lying. So I asked her to drop her location and she doesn't. This is crazy. (laughs) It's getting juicy, right? The next day, she comes to my place and denies all allegations of being with him and even sleeping with him. He sent me another message telling me they smashed all week. Come to find out, he wasn't lying. She was driving back from her home state to my state during that moment. She finally admits to being with him but never admitted to having sex. We end up having sex, and I smelled a fishy smell which she never had before, so I knew she must have got dicked down while she was there. I go get checked and come back clean. Two weeks go by and she tells me she had sex out there, but with another one of the guys she was still entertaining, not the best friend, but the other dude. So it was the other guy, not the best friend, but the other guy who she says she messed around with before that she was still in contact with. So she had sex with him. So I'm not surprised because I knew all along, but again, going against the grain. She tells me I kicked her out and it wasn't cheating because we were not together. I agreed on that. But the lying about all of that was foul play and not a good look. I end up, um, 
I end things after a few weeks, which, yeah, I should have done way sooner. But during the breakup, the chick get drunk and ended up throwing a knife at me. During the breakup, the the chick ended up getting drunk and ended up throwing a knife at me. And I get hit, bleeding from my arm. I didn't put my hands on her, but instead I called the police. They arrest her of assault with it. They arrest her for assault with a deadly weapon, and she spent like three, four days in jail. She has a pending felony until her trial date. I ended up telling my two close homies about the situation, and they tell me, "Yeah, she was wild for throwing a knife, but I shouldn't have called the cops, and I should have just left my crib." I disagree with that, homie. I disagree with that too, but we'll get into that. The case is still pending, and I have no choice but to. I have a choice to make on whether going through with the prosecution or not. And to this day, she wants to be back with me. Certain days I do consider, certain days I do consider giving this another chance. What the, why? Like what? Let me finish. Certain days I do consider giving this another chance, but so much damage is done, and I know I won't be able to trust her. It's been about a year of messing around, and still, yeah. I fell in love with her, but I'm not able to be I'm not able to be back with her, even though I want to know, even though I want to. I'm not able to be back with her, even though I want to. I want to know. Excuse me, I'm fucking up. So he says, I fell in love with her, but I'm not able to be back with her, even though I want to. I just know it won't be anything good out of it. Okay. what are your thoughts? Any suggestions? All right. First things first. Right. This woman was very disrespectful to you and your house by talking to other dudes who she was piping out, her ex, while she's living in your house. That's very, 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 very disrespectful. And you wonder why she wasn't giving you any respect and you had to kick her to the curb because she saw that she could disrespect you in that way and you ain't do nothing about it. That's one. You ne- if a, I have this rule in my house. With my house, right? If a girl comes to my house, I don't give a fuck if we dating, we just fucking, we just smashing, we in a relationship. If she comes to my house, you do not have contact with other men while you in my house. When you leave, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. But while you in my house, you're going to respect my shit. No if ands, or buts about it. If you do... It's a violation. I will send your ass home. I don't give a fuck if it's 3.30 in the morning. I don't give a fuck if it's no Ubers. I don't give a fuck if it's no cabs. You better have a horse or some shit. You getting the fuck up out of my crib, right? That is very, very disrespectful. And if a woman sees that she can do that to you, she could talk to other dudes. If she takes it there with you to that to that point to where she talking to other dudes in your crib, she ain't paying no bills, it's your shit, and she violating you like that, you might as well cut your losses. The fact that she would even try you like that. You see what I'm saying? And she live with you. Now, it's one thing for a bitch to, you know. <clears throat> it's one thing for a chick to y'all be smashing and she texts a dude real quick. That's still a no-no in my house. But for her to be living with you and soaking up your resources and another dude, she hollering at other dudes in your shit, going outside on the porch to talk to him, bitch. You better catch a cab and go home and talk to them niggas. You're not finna be on my, you ain't finna be nowhere on my property talking to no other dudes. Very disrespect. It's a violation. You should have charged her to the game right then and there. That, that shit should have been, you, you're supposed to nip that in the bud ASAP. That's first things first. Now, for you, my man, and for every, any other guy out here that will probably go through some dumb shit like this. Unless you are serious about starting a family or marrying a woman, do not shack up with her. You lucky that this girl don't know the law and she not up on laws. Because where I'm from in Florida, if a bitch stay with you, if she get one piece of mail there, you're going to have to evict her. You can't kick her out. You see what I'm saying? And it's like that in a lot of states. If a person's living with you for over a month or something like that, they live there now. You can't just throw them out like that. You have to go through a process, pay money, go evict them out of their house. So be careful with who you let in lay up with you. Because all they got to do, once they start getting mail there, once they start getting mail there or they there for a, 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 um, a certain amount of time, that's their house too. You can't call the police to kick them out. You see what I'm saying? Y'all going to have to work that shit out. But you can't just throw them out like that. So be careful 
about shacking up with women. And you don't want to be mixing money and mixing bills because once you once you once you you know combine households with people, now they're <clears throat> and pay attention to this, fellas. Now their decisions affect you, right? So if they go on one way and you go on one, uh, another way, whether it's with finances or whatever, it's going to affect you too. You see what I'm saying? Protect your kingdom, protect your space until you're serious about starting a family or marrying a woman. If she's not, don't let her come live with you, bruh. Stop letting these hoes come live with y'all and use y'all for y'all bills because they ain't got nowhere to stay. Fuck that. I know you need, I know you, you know, you want company and shit. Don't it, it's it's too much it's 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 too much negative. It's not it's it's not nearly enough to be gained versus the downside of shacking up with a woman that you not you don't see a you know I'm talking about seriously starting a family with like she already pregnant or some shit and, or y'all engaged to get married or y'all having serious talks about marriage. Other than that, it's pointless, bro. And you gonna find out the hard way again. Luckily, this woman ain't up on game enough to know the laws. Because if it was one of these smart bitches, she would have told you, I ain't going nowhere. You're going to have to evict me. And now you're going to damn near have a squatter on your hands. So stop, you know, shacking up with women who you're not super, I'm talking about seriously invested in. That's number one. Now, unless a woman is invested in you, like super, you can see it tangibly invested in you, do not Get into a relationship. Why you guys keep trying to get into relationships and you skipping the process? You guys try to skip the process. Relationship building, building solid, building solid, healthy relationships. It's a process. It's not just this thing where you just do it because it's cute and it just works. No, it's a process to that, bro. It's a process. It, it, it takes time to build that. Y'all putting the cart before the horse, trying to just jump the broom and just Think it's going to work. It don't. You ain't building on nothing. You ain't setting no fucking boundaries. None of that shit. You see what I'm saying? You ain't setting no expectations. You haven't vetted the person. You don't know if they got a baby daddy. You don't know if they still attached to the ex-boyfriend. Stop getting into relationships trying to skip the process because you need it and you just want somebody around. Rebounds, right? The most common problem I have with guys that come to me is they are in situations to where they get a girlfriend, right? They meet a girl, they like her, and within a month or two, they're in a relationship in love and invested and everything, and then the girl flips out on them in, in two, three months. What happens was you were a rebound. When you meet a woman, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that somebody somewhere fucked up. Somebody somewhere fucked up. She gave you the time of day because somebody's slipping or somebody put kicked her to the curb or somebody cheated on her or she's vulnerable or something. But the reason a woman gives you airtime is because somebody fucked up somewhere. Rarely do you meet a woman who, who's been celibate. That's rare. There, there are women who take on the celibacy journey after they've, you know, after they've, if, after they've, been, they've been hurt or go through some sort of trauma or they're coming out of a whole phase. They'll usually go through a period of celibacy, right? But that's rare that women do that. Ninety nine point nine. Let me. That's too much. Say ninety seven percent of the time when you meet a woman, there's somebody somewhere in the background. What happens is if you go to, they still connected to that person. That person still has an imprint on them, and you haven't put your game down enough in order for that to naturally fall off. And then it, and then she starts to invest in you. You see what I'm saying? That's the main problem guys have. That's the main problem guys have is they end up being rebounds and they don't even know it, right? It takes time. It takes time. It takes game. It takes skill for a woman to be all about you, right? When you first meet a woman, she not going to just, she not going to just be all about you when you first meet her. Any woman who, when you first meet her and she just all super into you and just gives it all up for you, that's a walking red flag. And there's some, you better watch for the hook because there's something behind that. You see what I'm saying? She's out to get you in some type of way. When women do that, that's a, a tactics because they know a lot of guys are weak. And when they get, when they open up, they know guys let their guard down. 
So usually when women tr- out to like a slutty woman who trying to get you for your finances or whatever, or a, a, a super slut who just want to rest uh, uh, somewhere for a rest haven or a woman who trying to use you or set you up, what they'll do is they come super sweet, submissive, and giving you everything out the gate, right? Love bombing you in the whole nine. If you see that, that's a red flag. It t- a regular healthy woman, it takes some time for you to get her to open up and be all about you. That's a process. It takes time and it takes game, right? If a woman jump all on your dick, super submissive, first quarter, red flag. No bueno, right? You give the girl, and I said that to say, you give the girl two weeks, right? You give this girl two weeks to cut off her guys, right? Like I'm telling you, it don't work like that. No, it, you can't force somebody to do what they don't want to do. So, well, you know, I know we just met, but you got two weeks to cut them dudes off. If she's still tied to them, there's nothing that you can do to stop her wanting to see them or talk to them. It's a process. And removing the imprint from the old, I may do a whole course on that. How to remove the imprint, how to indoctrinate to get a woman on your program fully. I got how to make a little woman fall in love with you and shit, but I like that process of, cause that's a real, a real thing. When you meet women, they have ties to other people. And so it's a process to get them to, you know, pull away from them, purge the feelings and all of that from them and to get it all on you. That's a real process. Right. And a lot of guys, if they do succeed, they do so not, not knowingly, right. Not knowing how, but anyway, you 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 give the girl two weeks to cut her dudes off. She still got ties to them dudes. You, just because she may tell you yeah and shit, but that ain't gonna stop her. It don't work like that. It's a it 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 don't take. It's gonna take longer than two weeks. That's why you don't you shouldn't get invested in a woman that fast. It's stupid. It makes no sense. You understand what I'm saying? You basically you basically trying to turn a hoe into a housewife when you do when you doing shit like that. Oh, you got two weeks to cut the guys off. She don't want to cut them off. Because if she wanted to cut them off, they would have been cut off when when she started talking to you. Women will naturally, if a woman likes you and she's into you and, and everything is going good, she you don't have you wouldn't have to tell her to cut people off. She'll do it ins- instinctively, that's what she'll do. You see what I'm saying? Because most women generally are not, and I'm talking about a situation where a woman loves admires, respects, and honor you. Most women typically can't serve two masters, meaning they can't be into two people at one time. Women are not, they don't even have the desire to be. Women are not ambitious like us. Like men are ambitious. We want this bitch, the best bitch. Women just want the best bang for their buck in one guy. Now, I know it may not seem like that because we watching the internet and we watching the the hookup culture and we watching everything. So it seems like a a, a, a popping, a a hit and run type of era that we in. That's just the game. That's the dating game. The dating game has always been like that. It's just now we have eyes on it, right? And we can watch it like that. But what's going on now has been going on. Of course, women have more options and shit like that. But this whole game has been going on forever. But when a woman is ready for the man who she loves and respects, that's all she sees, and she'll stick with that for the rest of her life if he do everything that he need to do. Women are not ambitious in that way. Women are not the, I got to have this guy and I got to have this over here. Once they lock in on love and they got a guy, generally, right, generally speaking, that's what they focus on. They not like us. So you may say the hypergamy, oh, well, they want to get the best that they can. That's that's anybody. I want to get the best that I can. You should want the best that you can afford. Anybody. That's healthy. But they aren't like, there's this theory that, oh, they're going to monkey branch and all that. No. Once a woman finds something that she's satisfied with, she'll stick by that so long as she feels as it's worth it. So if the man is game and the man is doing what he needs to do, you, you won't have anything to worry about. If it's a situation where she loves and respects you and everything's healthy, right? You st- st- stop. I just went on this rant. I forgot why. I just want to say stop. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. So you're trying to make her cut off her dudes. Oh, yeah. I was saying because women are naturally, women are naturally, uh, you know, monogamous. 
right? Women, they'll naturally cut off their dudes or anything they entertain it when they see something and they put their eyes on it. So I basically said all that to say, stop trying to turn these hoes into housewives, period. And stop being a fucking rest haven to hoes, my dude. As soon as you meet the hoe, you just, oh, my God, I got to move you in and all that. You a rest haven. You ain't no pimp. You a rest haven for hoes, like they said on the one fucking movie back in the day. Stop being a rest haven for these hoes. You know what I'm saying? These hoes just need somewhere to sleep, and they get a sucker, and they got them. They don't respect you. When you when you can open up, when a woman see that she can get you like that, that fast, and you can just open your books up to her, she ain't going to respect you, bro. And clear as day, she don't. So that's that. Now, I don't know about your boundaries, but my boundaries, male friends are a negative. I know all y'all, most of y'all probably watch Fresh and Fit. And y'all see the experiment they run. Oh, he just my friend. Women, gen- women really believe. Women really believe that we hang with them because they just have great personalities. And no, nah, nah, bro. They they believe that though. So, you know, sometimes they know that the dudes want to fuck them, but there's some situations where girls gen- like really know where they really believe that there's no sexual interest. Now, are there outliers? To where you have a platonic relationship, you know, there can be platonic relationships where nobody don't want each other. Yes, I have a, a female friend like that. She'll probably be on the show soon. You know, I've been friends with her since fucking middle school. But there were things in the way of us ha- ever having anything romantic. And once we, like, the older we got, it's just like, ew. You know, very attractive, but she just ain't it for me. You know what I'm saying? And I, she probably feel the same way about me. But we never done anything. Her, the people, dudes, she, they think we did something. Every chick I think that that I talk to or deal with, that I know that know her or whatever, they think we did something, but I never did anything with her. So it does happen. Right? But even that situation, um, maybe I'll talk about it when she come on here, but even that situation, the only reason we did it, it was a reason why we did it. I put it like that. You know, and it was when we was younger. And I had loyalty for somebody. That's why I didn't do it. So, but even that could have happened. But what I'm saying is the male friends are negative, right? Now, if I get with a woman and she has male friends, you don't have to call them and be like, hey, I could never talk to you again. Fuck you, bye. No, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be having conversations with dudes and, and ch- chilling and kicking with dudes and texting dudes, friends or whoever, why are you in my space and, and we in a relationship? That's it. I'm the, the alpha and the omega in this motherfucker when it comes to dude. And this is why. Let me tell you why. It's practical. You don't want too many men in your mix. You see what I'm saying? Even if he, most of the time, again, most of the time, there's some sort of sexual interest there. Right? Or some type of interest, and it's not the girl's personality, right? Now, maybe they got cool when they was, you know, five and six years old and, you know, whatever. But most cases, again, there's stuff like that that's outliers. In most cases, there's some type of interest somewhere. Somebody wants somebody. And when you have a situation to where a woman who's feminine or submissive or a regular genuine woman a lot of the times they're open to leadership. And when you have a, I'm a leader and you have another leader. So he giving you his perspective on his program and how he do things. It may not be for a relationship, but I'm giving you mine. So you have, you going in two different directions. You, 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 you pulling your girl, too many people in, in your girl's ear at the same time, too many men or too many, you know, pulling your girl just different ways. is going to confuse her. And that confusion is going to manifest itself in her behavior. And it's going to become a problem in your relationship. It may not even be that the guy want to smash your girl. But just his way of doing things, his doctrine, she may respect him. And, you know, he may be an influence on her. So she's going his way while also trying to go your way. This confusion and just out of respect for him, just taking his advice or taking his opinions. But he may not do things the way that you do them in your house. So just her, by her respecting him and, you know, having some respect for him or whatever, she may take his or, or take on his opinions or ideologies. And that may not be your get down in your crib. So without her even knowing, 
she's going on a path or she's traveling in a direction that don't align with yours, right? So it's not like she's going to be, you know, intentionally starting problems, but when a, when a person is confused, it shows in their behavior. You understand what I'm saying? That's the main reason why I don't allow male friends. It's not a jealousy thing. It's not because I know you're probably going to fuck. It, it ain't that. Of course, a shoulder to cry on becomes a dick to ride on. Ride. We understand that. But that's not really the reason for me. I don't like other dudes in my mix. I don't like other dudes, other men in my program. You know what I'm saying? I'm the king of this ship. I'm the captain of this ship. I'm the king of this castle. You see what I'm saying? And I don't like other influence in my shit. That's the main reason for me. So, male friends are always a bad idea. It's a negative. You shouldn't allow it. If a girl tell you she got male friends or she have male friends, okay, that's cool, but that has to cease when you come on this ship. I'm not saying cut them off. But all that shit stops, right? And if you don't want to do that, there's the door. I would advise you handle your business like that, right? So you, your male friends is just that y'all do deal do that how y'all do that, but that's how I kick my game as far as the male friends go. Right now, <laughs> you cut off all your options, right? Based on potential, this woman came into your life, and because she was your prototypical type physically, you cut off all your options because you wanted to see potential or you saw potential. You, my friend, shout out to you, and I mean this respectfully, you are a goddamn fool. You're a fucking fool. You never, ever isolate yourself unless, and when I say isolate yourself, I mean cut your options off, your sexual options off, unless she's proven herself thoroughly, consistently over time. I'm talking a year, a year and a half. Then, okay, I'm finna go all in. I'm not saying cheat, especially if you establish that you're gonna be monogamous. I'm not saying carry all your holes into the new relationship. I'm not saying that. However you work your situation out is however you work your situation out. If you wanna have your holes, have your holes. I think you should be honest about it, though. Or if you're gonna be monogamous, be monogamous. But what you never do is cut off your lifeline, right? And when I say lifeline, I mean your, your options, Unless she's proven herself thoroughly that she's worthy of exclusivity. Stop giving women exclusivity. That's one of your bargaining chips to get them to act right, brother. That's what makes them act right in the beginning. Hey, if you don't, I'm not cutting off shit until you get on this program. If I see that you're on this program and it's consistently rocking, then I can cut them off. I can cut them off. Now, you have to find a more intelligent way to convey that to a woman. Hit me up. I got you. Right. But I just had to help a guy. <laughs> I just had to help a guy tell his woman that uh, yesterday. Right. But. But, you know. Until she's proven herself thoroughly, consistently over time, you don't cut off your options for her. Never, ever. Now, I'm not saying throw them shits in your face, but look what you got. Right? Look what you got. You cut your shit off. She ain't cut her shit off. You see what I'm saying? Because you saw her potential. You saw, oh, we vibe good and she's the prototypical type and it don't work like that, bro. Keep your shit strong until she's proven that she cut her shit off. She's proven that she's into you. She's invested into you and now you can go all in if you choose to. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying cut your options off if you don't want to. But if you are going to, at least make sure it's worth it, my dude. You see what I'm saying? Because you're going to look like a ass. Hey, big head. It hit different. And one thing about, the thing about men, we will always double back on some pussy, right? Once a woman has moved on from you, bro, unless you have her mind, because there's, there's a few women in the world. I have them, and I will always have them, right? We ain't end on bad terms, though. I will always have them. There's a couple women in the world. I always have them. Their husbands are lucky and they, they dudes are lucky that I respect the game. I respect marriages and I respect people's relationship. So I, I'll respect that. But they, those, they're lucky that they girl, I'm the type of guy to have them. 
if you know you cut you 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 let your women fall by the wayside and you don't really establish nothing, a lot of the times you can't double back to them because they've moved on. Women will move on and forget about you. And you think I made that mistake too. I ain't gonna get too much into it. That's a mistake I made when I was younger. I would think, you know, like, you know, just projecting onto women, they you think that people are like you. Because you know men a chick could hit you up from 10 years ago and you'd be like, hell yeah, bitch, come through. Unless, you know, if, unless it was something like horrible. So you think that women are like that. Women ain't like that. And although it seemed at the time that, you know, they going to love you forever and they'll be like that. Once they get, they, once they get their new thing and they rub, they get you out their system, it's over for you. When, women typically, when you see women moving backwards, it's because the guy that they went backwards to still has a hold on them. But if the guy don't have, women ain't going to go backwards to a dude who don't have a hold on her. Once she get done, she done. You see what I'm saying? So you cutting all your shit off and you don't got a hold of these women's mind, you can't even double back on them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying live in scarcity because you can always go get other women. But it's just women ain't like men, right? So you done cut all your shit off. You done cut all your options off. And she ain't cut hers off. She still had hers, and she was utilizing them while she was living in your house. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Man, y'all are crazy, right? Now, let's talk about this manipulation she was pulling on you, right? It's classic. So you bringing up her shit, right, about her disrespecting. That ain't even nothing to even talk about, bro. That ain't even nothing to talk about. You bring up the shit that you saw. Why she living in your house? It ain't even. I don't even know why that was even a fucking conversation. But why you doing this? She trying to guilt trip you and gaslight you about some some bobby pins that a bitch left two fucking years ago. That is game. All she's trying to do is escape accountability. If you confront somebody with something, right? Let me tell you how you handle this. Let me give you guys some game first, right? What I want to say this. I'm gonna say this. If you confront somebody, right, if you confront a woman and she tries to bring up your dope to escape accountability, this is how you handle it. Because women will try to do that. This is how you handle that. You say, you know what? I'm willing to. Outside, now, if she disrespects you like my man, because this shouldn't even be no conversation, but just regular shit, right? You say, hey, listen, I'm open to hearing your concern, and we could talk about that, right? But let's deal with this first. This this just happened. Let's deal with this first. Now, if you wanted to say something about that, you should have did that when when we was going through it the first time. But you know what? I'm open to hearing about that. I'm open to hearing about the Bobby Pin at the bitch. I can explain that. But we got to stay on one one one. We can only be in one place at a time. So when we get done with that, then we'll get on that. And you don't let them escape accountability. Accountability. I I, I don't want you to, you know. We got we got to fix this first. I ain't running from that. I stand up on that. But you got to stand up on this first. Don't let them use that to run away from accountability. That usually works. If she respects you, if she don't, she'll probably try to start arguing with you and try to throw the conversation around. But you have to learn how to keep it where it's at. Don't let them, oh, what about the bobby pin? And you're like, bitch, I told you it was this and this. Because she know you told her that shit was from two years ago. She know that, but she throwing that shit at you so she could get off course and you can get frustrated. We already talked about it. And then she say some more wild shit, so now she moved the conversation over here and you done, y'all done forgot about what y'all was initially, what the problem was in the first place. Hey, listen, I'm willing to hear your concerns. We can hear you out. I'm willing to take full, re- I explain it to you. We can. I can accept responsibility, consequences or whatever. I'm ready to get into it. We can get into it, but first we're going to do this here first. You understand what I'm saying? That's how you deal with that. Now, some more manipulation. You're not soft enough. You're not emotional enough. That is game. That is manipulation. Fellas, listen to me and listen to me good. If your girl ever comes to you and say, you're not soft enough. You're not emotional enough. That is justification for them to cheat on you. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's game. It's manipulation. You know what's funny? Most of the guys who send me stuff like this, who send me emails saying, my girl said, 
I was not emotion. I was not emotionally available. She says I would. I didn't give her time. Those be the simpiest dudes who give their girl the world and give their girl all their time and spend every waking moment with their fucking girl. That and, and I'd be like, I have to ask them because they really be thinking that some. My girl said I wasn't spending enough time with her. She said I wasn't emotional enough. She said I was too. I wasn't soft enough. And I'm like, okay, you believe that? I, I, well, maybe. Do, what do you what do you do outside of work? I be with my girl. Doing what? Up her ass? How much you tell her you love her? Every other day? All right then, motherfucker. She running game on you. Period. That's game. That's a guilt trip. That's manipulation. It's called gaslighting. I want y'all to understand. They play the game, bro. Manipulation comes from them. That's their gift. Go check out episode one. You understand what I'm saying? That's a justification for cheating. And you said, my ex told me this too. My ex said the same thing too. I bet every dollar I have in all my bank accounts that your ex-girlfriend cheated on you too. I bet you she did. I bet you she did. Right? That you you you're not soft enough, or you're not emotional enough, and you ain't giving me enough time. That's that's justification for them cheating. Period. Your girl say that break up with her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now we end up having sex. Stop rewarding bad behavior. Bitch violates you. She get no dick. She get no energy. Nothing. Stop rewarding bad behavior. Now this is what I don't understand. How the fuck you even get hard for a bitch that violates you like that? How? Like, y'all have to be fucking. What's the word that you take pain? Men who like pain, masochistic? Or it's a, I forgot the word. I can't think of the fucking word. But y'all have to be. I can't even get turned on by a bitch who violates me like that. Who said, yeah, I was fucking the, the, the dude I was talking to in your house. I was fucking him. When I took a road trip and fucked him and I fucked another dude and my pussy stank now and I came over here and fucked you with a put fishy pussy. Ugh. How you even get hard for a bitch like that? That that just cause you pain and cause you stress. Y'all better than me. I don't I don't like makeup sex. I, you can make me mad, bitch. Get away from me. I don't even want to look at you. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't do makeup sex. That reward, that when when you let me tell you something. Makeup sex reinforces bad behavior period you think you punishing a woman by fucking her like a dog and treating her like a slut that's what she want that's the type of energy she want anyway so guess what she gonna do when she want to get it again disrespect your ass and violate you and stress you out again i don't fuck that makeup sex shit you violate me bitch get out my face on everything i love facts you feel me like how you get turned on by that God, like, how are you even still turned on? Like, ugh, like, you just at my house. You just at my house. You go fuck the dude who you was disrespecting me when. You go fuck another dude raw. And you go fuck this dude raw. And you come back and you hear a raw. Bruh. Y'all niggas crazy. Why in the fuck would you hear her raw in the first place? And you kept going when it was stink, bro. What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? What is wrong with you? Like, y'all, it, it can't, bro, it ain't that, it ain't no, uh, it ain't that much sex in the world for me, bro. I would. There's too many women out here for that, bro. How do you get turned on, number one? Then you smell it. How do you stay turned on? And then how you keep going? And then fucking have the nerve to tell me, some days I, I still want to be with her. What? The, Y'all niggas crazy, bro. Y'all wild. You a wild boy, dog. You a wild boy. <laughs> you, you and a wild boy. Niggas is clearly skeeting in. When, when, they, they, when women start to smell like that, they either have an STD or dudes just hitting it raw, skeeting in them, multiple. And you still hit it raw. Y'all just be jumping out the fucking plane, bro. While it was smelling and you kept going. Wow. Y'all motherfuckers is wild, bro. Now, this is the last point. And this is important. 
Fellas, if a woman ever assaults you physically, put her ass in fucking jail. No if and to bust about it. Because if you assault her, your ass is going to jail. We have this culture to where it's okay to hit men. It's okay to physically assault men. It's okay to hurt men. No, bro. That traumatizes it. You a human being. Physical violence affects everybody the same fucking way. That's number one. Number two, women need to understand that they can't do that. And when you let them do that, they going to do it to somebody else. I think they can do it to somebody else. Since what's going to happen, she's going to catch somebody and bust her fucking head open, and that dude going to have to go to prison because you let her think that it's okay to put her hands on a man. Put her ass in jail, and if I was you, I'd be at every court date crying, sniffling. I just want to be at suffering. You put her, she's a monster every time, straight up. Don't let her ass off the hook, bro. Don't let her ass. And she threw a knife at you. She could. I know somebody that died like that, bro. I know somebody that died like that. The girl stabbed him, and he died. You know what I'm saying? So don't play with them, bro, because if it was you on the other foot, your ass would be in jail. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't want it to be chick getting physical with you and then up, and then up outside. People record now. They didn't see in the house that she was kicking your motherfucking ass and tossed your ass outside. They just see that you restraining her. Your ass going to go to jail. Everybody going to put you on world star. You're going to be the abuser. People going to believe her. You understand what I'm saying? Call and put, your, put her ass in jail because she more than likely going to lie. And let me tell you something. If you fuck around and push one of these chicks off you and you fall and she hit her head and die or some shit like that, it's over for your ass. I was locked up with a dude that it happened to. He got into it. I'm not going to say that she was beating on him, but he got into a scuffle with his girl. He hit her, she fell, hit her head, and died. Rap for him. The movie, uh, what's that movie? He Got Game. It happened in that movie, too. He, he, Denzel Washington was tussling with the wife, pushed the wife off of him. She hit her head, and she died. He go to prison. Leave the boy out here to fend for himself. You don't want that to be you. So when they physically attack you, do what you need to do to put their ass in jail. Fuck all that shit your friends, your friend, your homie and them talking about, I want to go to put, fuck that. Fuck that, because they're damn sure call them on you. Protect yourself, especially today. It's 2022. You understand what I'm saying? But my advice for you, my brother, prosecutor, bro. You want my advice? Prosecutor. Prosecutor, do what you have to do. You shouldn't have to suffer through that, right? And they need to know that they can't do that. You are an empty soul, and you need to feel it. You need to find your purpose. Hit me up. I can help you with that. You need to get a hobby. You need to get your shit together. You obviously have it. You obviously stable because you have a house that somebody could live in. So you stable, right? Or you seem to be stable. Now you need to get your mind right. You need to get your temple together. You understand what I'm saying? Go seek therapy or something, but you have to do something to fulfill that needy energy because when you needy, and you don't value yourself. That's another thing. You don't value yourself. You take anything that come to you. You take anything that come to you. You let energy vampires in your circle. You let all type of shit. That girl could, and, and just because of that, because of your neediness almost got you killed. What if she wouldn't have hit, what if she wouldn't have hit your arm and it would have hit your throat or it would hit you in your eyes or something like that? Or, or, or it would have slit your shit the way she threw it at you and it hit a, a, a major vein or something like that. You know, or a major artery or whatever. That type of shit happens, bro. And once women can put their hands on you, it just gets, it just grows and grows and grows again. We're going to do the 10 levels of disrespects real soon. But you empty, bro. And you need to find yourself. And you need to value yourself. This is the consequences. This is the consequences of dealing, uh, of dating and dealing with women, and you don't have your shit together. And I don't just mean your money, but I mean your mind and your spirit and everything else. What happens is you are being targeted. You ever find yourself in a cycle to where you're dealing with shitty bitch after shitty bitch after shitty bitch after shitty bitch. You're just dealing with all this. Like, what the fuck? Do you realize that you are being targeted, bro? 
women, shitty women like that, women who are women like this chick, they feed on weak men. That's how they get their energy. I'm going to do a whole show about that probably next week. Energy vampires, they feed on this, bro. Cap, get you have your mind right. When you got your shit together and you solid, right, your mind right, you strong, you can Bitches like that, get them the bitches that ghost niggas like me, ghost guys like me. If if you know your game solid, you know your shit on point, and, and you get ghosted by a chick, it's more than likely she know that she, you ain't the one. See what I'm saying? So we get ghosted too. But it's good that she ghosted me because she ain't for me. You feel what I'm saying? But if you ever wonder why you keep meeting certain types of women, you know, women with mental issues and unhealthy women and all type of bullshit that come with all type of baggage, it's no secret. She targeting you. She liked your picture on Instagram. She liked your story. She set the bait. Boom. That, bruh, they just how you sit back and watch them and follow them and look at that ass and all that. They sit there and watch your statuses. They see your pay, they see your, your 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 motivational quotes trying to pull yourself out the gutter. They see all this shit. They watching you. These hoes are watching you, bro. Then they wait for a weak moment and they hit you. Boom, they like 10 of your pictures. I got him now. Then they move in in a week. You feel what I'm saying? This shit for real, man. This shit for real. They plotting too. Just like you sitting watching. Well, I'm going to hit that. I'm, I got to hit that. I got to have that. You, you sitting and scrolling and looking at all that ass. They sitting and scrolling and looking at all that money they can use. Look at how weak he is. I, can, I need that energy. I can, I can move in with him. They plotting on your ass. Then you post some motivational shit. Yeah, yeah. today is the start of a new day. I'm, I'm a new man today. Let me get him. <laughs> he in the gutter. Let me get him. Y'all think this shit a game. This shit ain't no motherfucking game. This real talk. But that's my advice for you, man. Now, let's get into this simping shit. A lot of y'all simps and you don't even know it. What is a simp, right? This is a, the definition of a simp. I ain't nothing with But remember, I come from the place that these terms originate from. I'm I, I'm not no internet nerd. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I'm not no internet guy. My my identity didn't come from the internet. Bitches called me King Dre, Grinch, and all that before I got on the internet, right? And this ain't no online persona. I do this for real. I live this for real. I've lived this my this my life. Right, what I'm giving to you, this game, this comes from my environment, bro. This comes from my element. So I know what these terms really mean. I know what game really mean. I know what simp and all that really mean, right? A simp is a man who puts a woman's needs above his own, who puts women above himself, who puts women on a pedestal and let this woman, let the woman have her way with him. A one, a man who lets women run over him and use him and abuse him. That's a simp. And he does this because he puts the woman above himself. That's what a simp is. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, there are symptoms of simping. So if you are a simp, you'll display some symptoms. And we're going to get into these symptoms. I have about nine. Now, it's more than that, but these are the main nine. I And, and some of them, aren't as obvious, right? Because some of them don't have, you know, a couple of these don't really have anything to do with the woman, but more so your behavior and how you feel about yourself, right? So those, that's what a simp is. Now, before we get into this, I have a surprise. I know you like the story time. And this one is a long time coming. I shared this story on Afi's channel and I kind of felt bad because I kind of, it was a spur of the moment thing because I didn't give this story to y'all first. And this is a story of me basically coming into the real game, right? This deep psychological shit, the real deal game, right? This is my coming to, right? And I'm going to share this with y'all for the first time on my platform in three and a half years. I always been waiting for the right moment and now is the time. But it starts with a story of me doing the most simplest shit that I've ever done in my life. <clears throat> Hands down. And this was the first and the last time I've ever been in the friend zone. So let me rewind you back to the time I was 15, I think. 15. It's 
15 years old, right? And remember, this is what led me to want to really have the upper hand as far as females and women go to control their minds and to have my way with them, right? Now, before... I always had, I never had a problem getting a girlfriend. I was not the, I don't have the story of, well, I, you know, at 25 after my divorce, I, you know, I suffered for two, three years and then I, I found some guy on the internet. That's not me. I always had bitches. Always. Now, I can't say I had all the baddest bitches in the school and all that, but I always kept me some bitches. Always from the time I was in maybe fifth or sixth grade, I always had a girlfriend. I never went without, right? First and foremost, I'm not the guy that found some guy on the internet at 35 years old after a 20 year divorce and I'm just not learning shit. I've been doing this shit long time ago, right? So I said that to say, I always had my little girlfriends. I didn't struggle with women, right? I didn't struggle as far as getting a girl and getting attention from girls. I didn't struggle in that in that arena, right? But when I when you go to high school, it's a different ball game. High school is a different ball game. It's my second year in high school. So middle school, eighth grade year, I was the it guy. Me and my crew was the it kids. We was the in, we was the, the guys. Me and my four or five homies. We had a crew. And we were those dudes in my 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 last year in middle school. We were the, the it guys. You go to high school, this is a bit different ball game because you got older dudes, the jocks, the football players, the neighborhood drug dealers, the gang members, and they older than you. They got way more game than you. It's a whole nother ball game. So I'm coming to a world that, you know, I'm a rookie. So I still got my little girlfriends. And at this time, you know, at this time, I'm, I'm fucking. I'm getting, my, I'm getting my pedo wet at this time when I'm in high school, right? So this is my second year in high school. Again, it's I'm, I'm still trying to navigate this shit because – one of the girls that I was dating in middle school, when we got to high school, it was a dude that was like in 12th grade. He snatched her up quick. She wasn't even thinking about me no more. You know what I'm saying? So, but it is what it is. I, that wasn't no thing where I was like hurt or nothing. We just, you know, messed around and shit like that. But, you know, I still liked her. She liked me. It was a little whatever. But he snatched her right on up. She was on him. She wasn't even thinking about my little immature ass no more. But, so it's my second year in high school. You know, I'm doing my thing. I got... A, a chick or two I'm hitting, you know, I got a girlfriend, not a girlfriend, but I got, you know, chicks I'm talking to. We kind of, you know, it is what it is. It's not really like an exclusive girlfriend, boyfriend thing. This is one girl that I really, really wanted. It's a Puerto Rican girl. She was beautiful at the time. You should see her now. She's washed up, but she was beautiful at the time. Beautiful Puerto Rican girl. Her boyfriend, her boyfriend was this cat. The drug dealer, nigga sold crack. Like a, he wouldn't sell weed. See, we sold weed and all that shit in school. This dude sold crack. Like he nigga had tattoos all on his neck and his face, gold teeth in his mouth. Dude was like 17 years old, 16. So he was one of those dudes. So this he had her like, you know, he had her mind, like, and she would, you know, we had class and shit. We would like <laughs> She would be venting, oh, he this, oh, he doing this, he doing that. And I'm not hating because I ain't no hater, but I'm like, come on this way. It's better over here. But she just like, I'm in the friend zone, basically. She ain't giving me no play. Oh, you so sweet, you so nice, this type of shit. Right? I'm frustrated, man. I got to have this chick. So Valentine's Day roll around. Here come the most simple shit I have ever done and probably will ever do. Right, Valentine's Day roll around. So I used to, you know, back in the days, everybody was trying to be rappers and shit. Well, I had access to a music studio. One of my homies, he had a, his his pops, you know, kind of invested in him. And, you know, we would do our little rap thing at, at his studio. So this was in the year 2001. 2000, 2001. Just way back then. So we decide to the girls that we like, we're going to make them some valentine's day songs so i made this chick i made this chick i wrote this chick a rap for valentine's day i wrote it had a beat and i recorded it every day and just like praising her you you know i made i thought i was cool because it was like you know i did it like in a thug way like like in a rapping way not like oh you know i it wasn't a love song but I still was simping like a motherfucker. <laughs> I was telling her how beautiful she is and how I just need her in my, the whole shit. 
right? Did that, got her some chocolate, some candy and shit. I'm like, I know this going to work. I know this got to work. Man, I sent her that shit. I, I burnt, we burnt it on the CD. I recorded it, got it mixed the whole night. <laughs> recorded it, got it mixed the whole night. Burnt it, put it on the CD. Got her a little Valentine's Day package. Put it, just put it, just, uh, took it to her for school. She listened to it in the CD player. Right? She's back in the little CD player. She listened to it. And the look on her face was like this much. But, you know, she tried to like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I can't believe you. Thank you and all this shit. But the look on her face was like this. nigga. She was like, you know, it ain't get me nowhere, basically. You know, it was still like, you know, we friends, and I don't want to take it more than that, and we friends, and, you know, I just felt like, man, fuck me, man. What the fuck? Like, I'm trying everything. Now, luckily for me, I, again, I was, I had a chick I was boning and everything this time. So I, it's not like, oh, this was the only girl in the world and shit, but I just wanted this particular chick. This chick was beautiful to me. This chick was like, back then at that point, she was like my type, beautiful, right? I couldn't get it, man. Couldn't get that chick. Now, my pops... At this time, all this was happening at around the same time. So that's the most simple shit I'd ever done. And I and you heard that here first live, King. I ain't never done no simp shit like that ever again. And I had that's my first and last time ever being in a friend zone. High school. Right? Around this time, I remember walking home from school, maybe a couple weeks after that, my dad had been locked up for murder since like 1991. So at this point, it has been like 10 years. So my dad had been gone my whole life since I was five or six, right? He had just started writing me, like just started writing me. I get home one day, I remember being frustrated, like man, this bitch, like all right, man, fuck this chick. Like I'm like, what do I need to do to get this chick? Like I need her. Get home, it's a letter in my, I'm about to say my inbox. There's a letter in my mailbox. It's my daddy. So I'm like, man, let me just ask this. Let me just ask him. So I wrote, I wrote him. I'm like, man, it's this girl that's like this Puerto Rican girl. I like her name, such, 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 beautiful. I be sitting with her in class. Because I was like, fuck all that shit you talk about. What you going to do when you grow up? I don't want to fuck all that. Talk about this game. But we've been talking like that. You know, me and my homies always thought we was players. We always thought, you know, we thought we was players. I got a tattoo that I got on my arm as a... As a teenager, the tattoo that y'all see on my arm, that's, that's like some game shit, like basically players and hoes and shit like that, our little clique. Right? So we always thought we was players and shit like that. But I ain't, I, I hadn't de- dived into the psychology of females until this point. So my dad on some, hey, how you doing? And do you good in school? And how's school going? I'm like, fuck all that shit. I write him, man, how do I get this bitch? What do I need to do to get this girl? on my team. And that's when it all, the floodgates opened and he started teaching me the game. My pops, like deep psychological shit. He taught me the pullback game. He taught me that. He was like, do this with this girl and watch she jump on your dick. And it worked like a charm. Now, unfortunately, (laughs) right, once she started to jump on my sack, she went to another school and I hadn't seen this girl up until like a year ago, I looked up on Facebook. I looked up what I, while I was talking to my man Afi. Shout out to Afi. We was talking about it, and I looked up while I was talking to her, talking to him about it. But he started teaching me real deal game, like real the real shit, the shit that I'm giving y'all. Of course, it's more like my shit got experience on top of experience, but like the game, like. As a kid, and, and it, this put me light years ahead of everybody around me. My homies, all them niggas at school who thought they was just all that because I knew how to get a woman's mind out. And I had the, the, the tutor and the sensei to teach me. And I believe the only reason he took it to that level with me is because he felt like, I truly believe that he felt like since he missed out and this is what I wanted, this was his way to reconnect with me because he missed out. I think I think he would have waited had he been in my life the whole time. Cause my dad was one of those dudes. My dad was a real ladies man. Like, 
you know what I'm saying, that 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 knew the game for real, knew psych female psychology, very fucking charming, gangster at the same time. See what I'm saying? That was my dad. But I think that he felt bad about him not being there and he just gave me what I want so I could stay in his life. Cause he knew that's what that I took an interest in that. Cause I was always interested in girls and, you know, getting them over. But when he started teaching me shit like that, he would teach me the he would teach me like the pullback game. Like how to get sex from single like 15 years old, like how to get sex from single women easy, like single mothers and shit, like real easy, teaching me little shit to do with single mothers, how to get money out of chicks and like he was teaching me this at 15 years old, how to get in their mind and capture their mind. He would always tell me, man, fuck all that shit. Once you get the mind, the purse gonna come, the pussy gonna come, all that shit. He was like, let them niggas, let them, let your homies chase the ass. Get the mind. I'm gonna teach you how to get the mind. He taught me how to do just that. That was my introduction into becoming the master level. What I was, I don't know, I wanna call it a seducer, a seduction art, or whatever, but understanding game on a deeper level. I always thought that I was good and I could get a girl and all of this shit, but psychologically making women fall in love with you, making them obsess over you, making them give you them your all, you know, making them give you they all and shit like that. I started learning that when I asked my dad how to get that chick. You see what I'm saying? And again, I guess he felt like I guess he felt like since he wasn't in my life, this was his way to give back because this is what I was interested in. Because I didn't want to hear all that, but what's up with football and basketball and all that shit? I'm like, look, man, this bitch, how I get her? I was cursing and everything. You know what I'm saying? And he taught me. He laced me. And we had that, we had that type of relationship for probably the next few years. And I started getting in trouble and going to jail and all that shit. So that shit ceased, but, you know, that's how I got into, you know, the game as far as on another level. And again, I wasn't worried about the muscle. This is how I know you did, oh, it's the guys with the muscles. And, you know, you young kids in, in high school and college, you worried about the jocks and shit like that. Yeah, they have an advantage, right? But the advantage you have, the shit, the shit that you have, you can get her up here. You see what I'm saying? And that's just as effective as getting her here. And that's what I learned. So just because you may not be the most popular kid at school, just because you don't, you may not be the most popular kid at your college, that shit don't matter. Trust me, I'm not, I ain't never had no six pack. I was never no star athlete in school. I did fuck around with this little street shit and thought I was tough and you know, not even thought I was tough, but I sold my little weed in school and shit. But back then, man, it was kids in school that carried guns and, you know, gold teeth and sold dope all night and shit like that. Like real gangster kids that was going to jail and shit like that. I was just selling my little weed and buying my little Jordans and shit like that. I wasn't no tough guy at that time. You see what I'm saying? I was a regular kid. But so you guys think that you have to be this to attract those chicks. You don't. Trust me, I lived it. This this game, this mouthpiece, that shit will separate you, put you miles away ahead of them niggas. Trust me. Trust me, I lived it. I was able to compete. I was able to compete and get girls on a level that most of them dudes never even could understand. And my, and my crew of friends, right, I was always the guy that they was like, how is you doing this? How do you get them to be like this? How? You see what I'm saying? My best friend, for example, at the time, my best friend. You know, player two, player two, real player. He at the time at the went back then, of course, I was you know, I probably was washing him up later on in life, but as far as numbers and body count, but back then, he was way more aggressive than me. He got more. Like he got more back then, he got more than me back then. But what he couldn't fuck with me is I got more out of mine because he was like, he approached every bitch he see he, he going in and he was like that since I was, I've been best friends with him since like third or fourth grade. You know what I'm saying? He just more, was naturally more outgoing, more, you know what I'm saying? Like that type of guy, but he couldn't, you know, eventually I laced him up, 
But he couldn't, like, he's like, man, how the fuck is you doing that? Like, how do you get them to do this? You know what I'm saying? See, he could just hit it. I could hit it and get, get him to fall in love and drive him crazy and shit. This always been me. And most dudes my level, on my, my age didn't have that type of game. None of them jocks or none of that. They didn't have that type of shit. So if a chick talked, sat down and talked to me and gave me some air time, she was mine, bro. She was mine. I always had that. You know what I'm saying? And again, you don't have to be the jock. You don't have to be that. Nah, bro. You just need some game. Because the way through everything is her mind anyway. You know what I'm saying? But that that damn that could be a whole fucking podcast. But that that's my introduction into this this deep game, right? Again, I I thought I was always a player, but that's my introduction into this deep shit. Like this this real psychological shit was behind that girl. You know, she ended up jumping on my jock, but you know, she she went to another school. And I actually moved to Miami. Probably a month after that. Man, when I was in Miami, I, don't, <laughs> okay. I ain't going to talk about Miami. We'll leave that for another podcast. But I, I was running through them in Miami. But uh, I ended up moving out of Miami. But anyway, let's get into the, the topic, right? And I'm I'm trying to not to be too long with this because I know y'all want to know if you're a simp or not, right? The symptoms of simping. Now, the first symptom that you are a simp is that you have envy and disdain for men who are successful in this game. You have envy for the alpha males. You have envy for the players, the Chads, the Tyrones. You tend to call them, you look at them like a derogatory thing. When I first got into this space, it was a little uncomfortable even working with some of these guys and even dealing with some of these guys because of the way that they treated Guys who were successful. Like, oh, she likes the Pookie and Ray Ray and the Tyrone. Because that was me. Like, the, the the person who y'all call Pookie and Ray Ray, that's me. You know what I'm saying? I that It's like derogatory. Like, I look at it like derogatory. Like, it's like hating. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can tell if a guy is a simp or not, if he has disdain for guys who are successful. You put labels on them. Chad, Tyrone, Pookie and Ray Ray. Pookie and Ray Ray get all the girls. It's the way to make yourself feel better about your lack of success in the game at least. You see what I'm saying? So you put derogatory shit onto other people. Pay attention to pay attention to the guys. If you're a kid or you're a guy that don't have game and you want to learn game, pay attention to the coaches who talk derogatory about the men who are successful at getting what you want. You need to follow the coaches who are getting and teaching you how to get what you want instead of the guys who are hating on the guys who are getting what you want. Because the Chads and the Tyrones or whatever y'all like to call them and the Pookies and Ray Rays, they getting what you want. So maybe you should be paying attention to them and not being led like a sheep to become a fucking hater because that's hater talk. And guys like that have always had disdain for real players. We call them busters and suckers, and ducks, and simps. Those guys always existed. The thing is, right, the thing is, those guys can say what they want to say without repercussion. See, back in the days, them niggas kept their mouth shut because it was real consequences 15, 20 years ago for saying something. If you said something back then, you had to stand on it. So now these guys can get on their computer, become who they want to be to sell you some shit, Right, they can get on their computers, be who they want to be, do a couple push-ups, and you know, they still beta males, super aggressive beta males that want to portray like they this, but they still had a envy and hatred for the guys who've always gotten what they wanted to get. And they can come over here and they can talk shit with no repercussion. You see what I'm saying? Don't be fooled by that. When you see a man hating on another man, there's a reason why he's hating. It's because he's not successful. You don't see six people who, you don't see players talking shit about other players. You see what I'm saying? It's only the unsuccessful people who want to tear people down by calling them, to, giving them the to talk, the to, uh, trolly, mean, derogatory names. It's that's disdain. And if you have envy and disdain for real players, 
for alpha males, for Chads, Tyrones, Pookies, and Ray Rays, you are a simp. That's that's one of the ones that's uh, uh, undeniable, right? But you don't have to be like that. Get in the game. Learn from them. You see what I'm saying? We used to call them, again, busters, suckers, ducks, player haters. That's what they was. Did guys like that be on here talking that shit, those guys are called player haters. We're called player haters. Because they can't, and people disdain what they can't have. And people envy the man who has what he wants. But a lot of trickery today, so people can make, again, get on here and make, they, they learn how to be charismatic and they teach you who don't know any better. They put the, they put the hate on you and teach you how to be a hater because you don't know any better and you're impressionable and shit. Learn some real games, some real game from some real from some real dudes. And again, here's some, a tip for you: if the content creator that you are learning from is hating on another man, that's not the guy that you want to follow. I'll just say that. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that's number one. Number two, the second symptom of simping: you serve women. Instead of them serving you. It's one of the things my pops taught me a long time ago. Women are built to serve you, bro. He didn't say it like that, but I figured that out with the things that he was telling me. Get them to do this for you. Get them to do this for you. Get them to do this for you. Start small. Then increments. Go up in increments. I was learning this at 15, 14, 15 years old. Right? I was learning how to get women to serve me, right, in a um, calculated way. Now, when I was in sixth grade, this beautiful chick, beautiful Indian girlfriend, my first real girlfriend, real, like, real, like, it, it got real. I had girlfriends in elementary school, but this one was real. This was, for me at least, this felt real. She set the tone as far as, like, what I expected from any other girl after that, because instead of me buying her flowers and like most guys was doing at that time, buying them flowers and buying them candy and buying them tapes and shit like that. She was doing that shit for me, buying me candy for my birthday. She bought me the outcast. Um, the, the, uh, me and you, yo mama and your cuz and two, she bought me the single tape for my birthday, big lollipop. She would call the radio station, uh, every night. Cause everybody listened to the radio station. She would call it, Hey, I want to give a shout out to my baby, Andre. Real talk. This was sixth grade. So I was used to girls serving me, but my tops, my pops taught me how to do it in a more calculated way. But I said that to say that most guys are uncomfortable with accepting service from a woman due to social engineering. So society engineers you to be a beta male and to serve women. But women are happiest, right? And they're at their most simp feminine when they're serving you. That's too much game, right? But I'm going to let you know. If you feel, right, if the fact of a woman doing things for you, servicing you, giving her all to you, if that makes you uncomfortable, you're a simp. You can change that, though, by a little practice. But you're a simp if that makes you uncomfortable. Because real kings, real men, real alpha males, Chads, Tyrones, Pookies, and Ray Rays get served. This is why women chase these guys. Because these guys in a position put these women in a position to be feminine, giving, nurturing, serving. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying not to get too deep. You serve women instead of them serving you. And you get comfortable with the fact of accepting that service, if that makes you uncomfortable. And I know it do because I talk to many of you guys and it makes them uncomfortable because they believe they should give, give, give to women. Right? You're supposed to protect women. You're supposed to provide for them. Cool. But the, the pursuing, the serving, and the, the submitting, and women are supposed to do that. And when they do that, they're the happiest. They're the most feminine. And that same feminine, the way you feel masculine, when you, you and your masculine element, it feels good. That's how they feel. The feminine, when they get in their feminine, it's intoxicating. The man who can pull that out of them is usually the man that has them, and that's the man that they chase. The bad guys and the pookies and the ray rays and shit, they know how to do this. So, number three, you seek the approval 
It's third sign that you're a symptom of simping. You seek the approval and acceptance of women being overly romantic or nice. You want acceptance from them, right? When you when you overly romantic to a chick, the reason that you're doing this is because you want her to accept you. So you showering you showering her with shit. You know what I'm saying? When you overly nice and you know too agreeable and shit, you want her to accept you. You're doing this for acceptance. That's simp behavior, right? When you're afraid to say no, that's that's seeking approval and acceptance. When you don't want to say no or stand up for yourself, you want her to accept you. You're afraid of being rejected. That's simp behavior. When you don't stand up for yourself, that's another s- approval seeking behavior. That's another acceptance seeking behavior when you can't stand up for yourself because you don't want to lose her you don't want to reject her you want to be accepted right tricking is another form of approval seeking behavior all of these behaviors are uh, seeking approval and um wanting to be accepted by women if you have this feeling which many many guys do if you have this you are a simp listen i don't give a fuck if a bitch like me or not not at this point I don't think I ever have. Maybe if they stopped, maybe I would. But I don't care. I don't give a fuck if a bitch like me or not because I know someone will. So if she don't like me, oh well. If you don't like my program, oh well. Fuck you. It's a million that somebody going to like me. I don't give a fuck if a bitch approve of me. I don't give a fuck if she accept me. I am me. If you don't like it, there is the door. You dig what I'm saying? Don't be the guy. Don't be that guy. And again, a lot of you guys feel like this. A lot of you guys operate like this. A lot of you guys operate in this element to where you don't want to offend them. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to rub them the wrong way. You don't want to tell them no. You don't want to stand up for yourself. You're being overly available, uh, overly romantic, overly nice. You're afraid to say no. You, You give them everything. The reason you do this is because you want to be accepted. You want them to accept you. You want them to like you. You want them to love you. You want their approval. That is simp behavior. That's a symptom of simping. So if you do that, you have to stop. If you need help with that, hit me up. We can fix that. Saveabroadacademy.com. Now, the fourth symptom of simping is you invest your feelings and your resources before boundaries are established and value provided, like my man in this email. What simps do, right, what a simp will do, and the reason that they do this is because they want a woman so bad. They will invest their feelings and they invest their resources before they establish boundaries. You see what I'm saying? Before the woman has provided value. They just go all in hoping that this gets the woman instead of doing things the right way. If you do that, and a lot of you guys do that, and this guy did that in his email, if you've done that, if you do that, that is a symptom of simping. You are a simp if you do that, right? You're basically saying, you have more value than me. Here's everything that I have. You don't have to show me shit because I believe that you have that much value already. Even though you've tangibly provided me none, none, just your mere presence is valuable enough for me for me to give you everything and for me to open my books to you and open my home to you and you have access to my resources and I protect and provide you. Just your just your company alone is worth that. That's a simp's way of thinking. Real guys who know their worth and know their value and value themselves and love themselves, they make women earn everything that they have to offer. That's... The fourth symptom of symptom, right? Now, the fifth fifth symptom of symptom ties into that. You invest and commit based on potential. So with that, you know, with the fourth one, it's based on, you know, boundaries and, you know, value before you invest, you know, before you establish boundaries and before the value is provided. With this one, you invest based on potential. So you see a woman, you meet a stripper, and she's sitting down talking to you and being soft, and she's telling you how much she wants to go to school and change her life, and you sh- just jump off the plane and jump straight into the, you know, jump dive straight out of the plane and try to upgrade her life and try to push that on her and, you know, put her through school and all that shit when she ain't put herself through school, 
when she ain't, she ain't taking the steps to even, you know, she hasn't even taken the steps to even live out the dream that she says she want to live. A lot of the times these hoes just be talking idealistically. People are where they want to be. If a, if you meet a woman and she's talking about, well, I want to be one day, I want to go to school and, you know, and all this shit. If that's what she really wanted, that's what she'll be. She'll be working towards that. Or have a plan to start doing it. But you don't don't start investing in all that shit just based on potential of what you think that she should be. Because most women are not going to live up to your potential. Most people are not going to live up to your potential. And that's unfair to them that you expect them to. Because that's you projecting onto them. And you shouldn't do that. So if, if you're a guy who invests and you commit to a woman based on her potential and not her reality, and not what she is in the moment, then you are a simp. Sixth symptom of simping is you pay a woman for her time, her company, or her sex. Now, we've been talking about tricking pretty much every other episode. I'm not going to get into tricking today too much into it. You go check out episode two, The Dangers of, uh, the dangers of Tricking, I think. We even interview a trick for like a 45 minutes. A good conversation with a guy who's a... Uh, 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 um, well, uh, self-proclaimed, he, he knows he's, a, uh, uh, I was about to say a snitch, a trick, <laughs> my bad Jada. Um, he knows he's a trick. He, you know, it is what it is. He accepts it, but go check that out. But if you invest, I mean, if you pay a woman for her time, if you pay a company for uh, a time, her time, you pay a woman for her company or you pay a woman for her sex, that is a symptom of simping. You are a simp if you're a trick. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you can be a simp and not be a trick, but if you trick, you're a simp, basically. Right now, the next symptom of simping is you have a fear of checking women. If the thought of putting a bitch in her place makes you uncomfortable, or if you're scared of that, you're scared of what's going to happen when you put a bitch on ice, you're scared of what's going to happen when you enforce your boundaries or check a woman, if you're scared to do that, you are a simp. If you tolerate the bad behavior and disrespect from a woman, you are a simp. At the end of the day, she ain't going to do shit to you. She can't beat you up. She none of that shit. Stop being scared to put women in their place. They actually respect it. They actually like you more. Stop being scared of confrontation. Stop being scared to enforce your boundaries. You see what I'm saying? Because they ain't going to respect you if they can walk all over you. So don't be scared to check no chick, bro. She violates you or she get out of line. You check her, and if she don't want to get it or she want to argue and be disrespectful, you make her hit the highway. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You understand what I'm saying? I want you guys to understand something and take this. King Dre said this. King Dre coined this, and this is some real shit. Every time you tolerate a woman's disrespect, you do every man on the planet a disservice. Every time you tolerate a woman's disrespect, you do every man on the planet a disservice. What do you mean by that, King Dre? That girl who threw the knife at my man, right, and, and disrespected him in his house, she's done that to somebody else and done that to somebody else and done that to somebody else before. So every guy is making it harder for the next guy. You understand what I'm saying? Now, it'll take a real dude to come in there and stop that, and then she'll understand it. But the reason she even tries you like that is because she thinks she can. She has the confidence and the balls to try you like that. And that confidence just don't appear out of thin air. That confidence comes from success, success that she's had pulling the shit elsewhere. So every time you let a woman call you out your name, every time you get a woman, every time you let a woman call you out your name, disrespect you, cheat on you, violate you, put their hands on you, you know, disrespect you, whatever, and you don't do anything about it, you make it harder for the next man. And as men, we need to stick together because we all have one thing in common is that we know these bitches are out of control. We know that. And so we need to get on all, get on one accord, at least under the banner of getting our women back together. And we can start right there by stopping, tolerating disrespect and bullshit. Women shouldn't be able to, if you watch Fresh and Fit, Women, I, that's why I love that show because it exposes a lot of the things like that, that guys like me talk about. You get to see women playing it out in HD. You know what I'm saying? But 
women are very, if you watch that, they sometimes they talk about flaking on dudes. Flaking is one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. Standing somebody up who set aside time for you. Women are literally like okay with that and they laugh about it. On the show they talk about it, laugh about it. Oh yeah, I just, you know, I tell a guy, you know, my favorite thing, my favorite excuse is my auntie sick and all that shit. They like have no qualms about it. You know why they do that? Because they know that they can get somebody else. They know that, you know, you'll be right there when they come back. They know that you'll keep chasing them. They know that another guy tolerate that. If women, all women knew right now, if they flaked, it'll be hard for them to keep a man or get a man. They will stop flaking. Because before social media, women didn't flake like that, bro. Women didn't flake like that. Because they ain't really know where their next meal was going to come from. You understand what I'm saying? It was harder for women. Although it was, it's always been easier for women to get easier for women to get sex than men, it was still harder for women to get play because there was no internet. You understand what I'm saying? And women didn't approach men. So women had to wait for men to approach them. So women were not as flaky, not as disrespectful. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that ain't the case. They flaky. They flaky. They disrespectful. They fucking, you know, the whole nine. But the reason that they doing that is because guys allow it. So every time you tolerate a woman's disrespect, again, you do every man on the planet a disservice. A chick flake on you, that's it. If she flake on you, don't have a rescheduled date, say, hey, listen, something came up, blah, 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 let's meet tomorrow, that's it. You shouldn't give her, that's cool. We can meet tomorrow at 9 if that's cool with you. You know, I First round on me, I make it up to you, whatever, that's cool. But if they just flaking and you still giving them attention, and they just stringing you along and you allowing that, the reason they feel so confident to do it to somebody else because you give them the confidence to do it. Stop tolerating women's bullshit, and I can guarantee you, if we all stopped tolerating bullet, bullsh- women's bullshit in unison, they will change because they need you just like you need them. They need that attention. They need that validation. Let me tell you something about human beings. We desire companionship we desire attention we desire desire from the opposite sex we are hardwired to do that and the people who can't do that are usually they usually suffer ment- mentally from it look at the men who can't get you know validation and sex from women look at them look at the women who can't who can't keep a guy past sex you see what i'm saying we want different things but it all we want different things as men and women we want different things, right? But the thing we want is common. We want validation. We want desire from the opposite sex. And we show those values in different ways, right? And I said that to say that they need you too. If men today said, you know what? We ain't dating. We ain't getting no more attention. We ain't liking no bitches' pictures. We ain't no more dates. Fuck y'all. We did that for a week. These hoes will fall over and die. On everything I love. See, they, you know why they so, I don't need no nigga. I fuck these niggas. Fuck these niggas. Get that bad girl. Yeah, yeah, fuck them. Yeah, we don't need y'all. You know why they act like that? Because it's a hundred motherfuckers. They got a hundred DMs with heart eyes and they take it for granted. Because guys give it away so freely. Guys let them do what they want to do. That's why they act like that. If that shit stopped with men today, women will change overnight, I promise you. But don't let them fool you with, we don't need no man, I don't need nothing. The, the reason they saying that is because they got 100 dudes to fuck. So they take it for granted. If that went away today, if that bitch lost her legs, she would be on TikTok crying about how guys don't want her and you shouldn't leg shame. You see what I'm saying? Guys are pigs because they don't want to date her. They'll be crying. When you hear women talking like that, they take it for granted, and they have it in abundance. The same way I say, fuck a bitch, I don't fuck by these older. You know why? Because I know I can get it because I know there's a whole bunch of them. Um, I'm confident in it because I've been successful with it. You understand what I'm saying? So <laughs> I said all that to say, stop being scared to check women. If you have a fear of checking women or you tolerate bad behavior and disrespect from women, you are a simp. That's a symptom of simping. Again, I'm gonna say this one more time. Every time you tolerate a man's di- a woman, every time you tolerate a woman's disrespect, you do every man on the planet a disservice. Now, 
The next symptom of simping is you take women back who cheat on you, or if you've taken a woman back who cheat on you, or who violates you in that way. I want you guys to understand something. For every guy who I get every day, I get DMs and emails. She cheated on me, but I want her back. She came back to me, and it's three months later, and she's apologized, and the sex has been good, and she's been acting right. It's this game, right? If another woman conquers your girl while she's with you, game over. If another man conquers your woman, because when a woman lays down to have sex, she's been conquered. And if another man can do that, that's a testament to how much she don't love you and don't respect you, right? If she can give herself to somebody else and let somebody else conquer her, let somebody else inside of her, game over for you. You want, you ain't, ain't no coming back from that. Now, if y'all on a break or y'all ain't fucking around and she get her rocks off, cool. But if she does that shit while she's with you, while she's supposed to be in a situation with you, it's game over. You're not coming back from that. And if you accept, if you accept that, she gonna lose respect for you, and it's just gonna keep happening again. She gonna do it again, again because it's a respect thing. When women cheat on you, it's re- a respect thing. That's what that's what they take into account before they make the decision if they respect you or not. If a woman respects you, she'll break up with you before she cheat cheat on you. She'll tell you she need a break before she cheat on you. But if a woman is cheating on you, the respect is not there. Women don't do men like that that they respect. You understand what I'm saying? And if the respect is gone, the love is more than likely gone. And it's more than likely not coming back. She's going to keep doing it over and over again. There's no way for you to get that type of respect back after it's gotten that far. You know, you know what I'm saying? She's going to do it again. So if you, if you, if you take women back who cheat. Or you have ever. Because me, you cheat on me, we done. I, we ain't got nothing to talk about, bro. We don't have nothing to talk about. We done, bro. Once another dude get your mind, it's over. While you with me. Now, if we take a break or if we break up and, you know, you go out and do your thing, I'm cool, I could deal with that. You understand? But if you, we in a committed relationship, we got a family or some shit, and we, got a, we share space and all this, and you coming to get in my bed after you... Ain't nothing else. We done, bro. There's nothing else to talk about. I love and value myself way too much to even allow that. That's one thing you have to, guys have to learn to do. Value yourself. Go to Save Abroad Academy, SaveAbroadAcademy.com. I have a whole course on valuing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Valuing yourself as a man and learning how to do just that. Learning how to establish your value. Learning how to build your value so you can have something to value. You understand? That's a very important course. Go to SaveAbroadAcademy.com to get that. But, um, yeah, if you take women back who cheat on you, you you're a nut, bro. <laughs> you're nuts. You're a fool. You're a buster. You're a sucker. You're a duck. King Dre won't. It ain't no way in hell. I don't. I feel uncomfortable taking the chick back after we break up anyway, because I know she fucking. I understand how the game go, but I don't even look at you the same after that. Even after, even if we break up, I don't even look at you the same no more. You will never get a certain you know, a certain level of me even after that. Even if I do get back with you, you know what I'm saying? But to cheat on me, nah, bro, we, that's out. That's all the way out. And then you ain't going to find one chick that's going to ever say that. You cheat on me, we done. You know what I'm saying? But that's because I love myself and I value myself to let people play with me like that. Y'all got to get on that too. Now, the last symptom of simping, it's thirsting over women on social media, the overvalidation, and oh my God, this is why they act the way they do. This is one of the reasons they act the way they do. All that common weird shit. <laughs> if you ever look at a chick, go on TikTok and see them chicks who be doing a little shaking their ass and shit. You ever read the comments? You should read the comments one day. You sit and read the comments. It's disgusting. Or go on Facebook when a chick say something. Oh, go on. She go. She put on Facebook. Oh, I'm so sad. I don't have a Valentine's this year. And watch the fifty fucking suckers. Just like oh, and you know what's crazy? It be some chicks that, that's on my Facebook, right? <laughs> they'll say some weird. They'll say some shit. Put out a thirst trap or whatever. 
and the dudes are flooded and they don't even like the kind the bitch don't even like the comments or nothing. She don't say thank you or nothing. You feel what I'm saying? But if she put up a post saying, my son is sick and he go prayers, girl, she like that and respond or something. But you know, when them simps speak, they don't she don't even respond to it. And they just keep doing it. You see them on every post. Stop. Please stop. Because what that's doing is making women over value you themselves. Now, I don't have a problem with women who are confident and feeling themselves. I don't have a problem with that. Go, girl, do your thing, right? It's your world, <laughs> right? In your world. It's your world in your world. Don't bring that shit over here. You humble yourself over here. Or I humble you, you know. But it's cool to be, you know, you can swag and be confident. It's cool. I like that. But chill out with the sassy shit. But, you know, the reason you see that is because of that. And it's more common with average, extra average chick. When I say extra average, I ain't talking about sevens. I'm talking about extra average, fours and fives. Act like that. That's why they act like that with y'all. That's why they flake on y'all. That's why they treat y'all like shit. That's why they give you the ass to kiss because they have that. They have. They can tap into that. They can tap into all type of guys who just, you know, you know, groveling at their feet over nothing, over the internet, bro. You know what I'm saying? Putting hearts. So every time they put a story up, it's a, if you ever, fellas, y'all should stop doing that for real. Now, if it's a girl I'm dealing with for real and we done dealt with each other and we fucking or we dating and shit, I fuck, I've seen some, or I dated her before or, you know, we got rapport with each other. If she put up a story or something, I comment on a story or send her something on it, but that's we already done fucked or we already fucking or I know her or something like that. But just a random woman and shit, nah, bro, we ain't doing that, fellas. Listen, stop doing that. You know why? If you knew how many dudes was doing the same thing that you was doing, if you looked in that girl's inbox and you saw how many hearts was on her story, it'll make you sick. It will literally make you sick. You'll feel like the biggest sucker in the world. Like, why am I a sucker like the rest of these dudes? You should stop doing that. Stop doing that, bro. But all of this shit, when you're doing all of this shit, women who ain't giving you nothing back, just thirsting over women on the internet, commenting weird shit, simping on their posts, liking all the fucking, sending all the hearts in the stories. It's okay to like a picture if you see it. Ain't nothing wrong with that, Right? But all that extra shit, I be seeing y'all commenting on chick shit and the hard eyes and all that shit. Stop doing that weird shit, bro, because that's what make them act like that today. That's what make them feel like they can discard you because they feel like they have a whole sea of dudes who they can replace you with by looking at their comments. You understand what I'm saying? This is how the game has changed. Now, the game has been the game. It's always, you always, have, women always been women. But what happens is now, Average women and fat women act like they divas now because it is. Because it is this thing, right? I was fortunate enough to date in an era where women didn't act like that. I was fortunate enough to date in an era where if you wanted some easy ass, the easiest ass to get was from a, ch- a chubby woman. You didn't have to be a fat girl. You could be a chubby girl that had a look extra pounds on her. That was the easiest ass. You know why? Because she ain't get attention like that. That was the easiest ass to get. Everybody knew that. The girl who was average. The girl who everybody was. My pops taught me that. So something my pops taught me. It's like, you want to get the most out of a woman? You can get it from the dimes. He told me, you can get it from the dimes. Yeah, you know, you, you, you'll work a little bit harder, meaning you'll have to put a little bit more game down, but you can get it from them. But you'll never experience. The, the love you'll get from an average woman is something beyond that if you put that same game down. He taught me that. But average women, big women back in the day, and again, not even super big, nasty, but just extra few extra pounds. Those was the easy, because dudes, dudes weren't really hitting on them like that. Again, a lot of you young cats probably can't fathom this. Women didn't have social media to get attention. In order for them to get attention, a guy had to physically get them attention. And the only guys that was giving them attention was the guys who had the balls to go approach women. You see how all these guys ain't scared to approach women and got approach anxiety and all that? Just imagine a world before dating apps and before the internet. These same guys still existed. They just ain't getting no play. 
Because they wasn't approaching no bitches. The only people that would approach women, men, women is the men that had the balls to. And a lot of women, when a lot of men wasn't really hitting on average or ugly chicks or average chicks or chicks with, like, you know, bigger chicks. A lot of guys weren't hitting on them. They was a lot more cooperative, a lot more. Chicks like that, now the dimes always acted like that. But... Or the chicks that was sevens, eights, and shit that got attention. They always acted like that. But those chicks were a lot more humble. They were a lot more cooperative and a lot more submissive. And not even just big or average chicks. Chicks who had, like, physical defects in their face, with their face. Shout out to my pops. I was laced with this game. Young. Chicks with gaps in their teeth. Easy. Fuck, high fine shit. She got a gap in her teeth. They still, you still could put down on chicks like that, you know, but again, the internet, they have unlimited access to validation. But chicks back in the day, like a chick with a gap in her tooth or a chick with like a mole or something like that, that had like ins- things about her that she was physically insecure about. Because a lot of chicks would be, a lot of chicks with like a, a overbite or underbite or they had a gap or something like that. You can play on that easy back in the days. Even if she was fine and body banging, but they would be so insecure about shit like that. You see what I'm saying? And you could come in and, 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 and fix that right on up. And they'd love you like no other, bro. That shit was crazy back in the day. It's still good, though. The game, it's changed, too, but it's a lot easier. Despite what y'all think, it's a lot easier to get laid now. It's way easier to get laid now, and you could be upfront and open and you don't have to really play the game as much as far as, like, back then. Back then, you had to court more. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to you, you had to court more. You understand? Now, it's easy, bro. It's easy. You don't have to, you don't have to cold approach women. You don't have to, nothing, bro. You can just get online and, and get your numbers up. Just get online and get your numbers up instantly. They coming straight to the crib a lot of the times. A lot of times, man, back in the day, chicks used to want to, you know, they have want to, you know, some of them will come straight to the house if you did it right, if you talked on the phone and shit. But, you know, it's just different. But I said all that to say, like, average chicks and fat chicks and chicks who had, like, shit going, like, she may have, like, a little pudge or, you know, something was off about her. Her nose was maybe a little bigger and shit. Man, them chicks, even, if, again, if she was gorgeous, they, like, you can penetrate chicks like that a lot harder easier back then because they wasn't getting that type of validation versus now everybody knew if you wanted to if you was broke right <laughs> and it's real talk it is it's still kind of like that but you know but everybody knew some years ago if you was broke you needed to come up you know what I'm saying? You need a, a somebody car to drive to go catch your plays or whatever. You need somewhere to stay. Get you a bigger broad. Everybody knew that. They'll break you off their check and all. You can come up off a big broad. they give you their taxes and all. They don't act like that. I mean, you still can still play on that, but they knew their place, bro. Back in the days, those type of chicks knew their place. They didn't act like it's be big girls like act like they fucking Beyonce. Like for real, a lot of them big girls act like that sassy and you should see what they be saying on dirt i'm chubby if you don't like it fuck you you know why they could say that if you don't like if you don't like chubby girls swipe left you know why they could say that because it's a 500 motherfuckers putting hard eyes in their dms big girl they ain't used to act like that now if you got game you still could you still could put poke poke holes in that because they still insecure at the end of the day you know what I'm saying? If you're a dude like me, you got game, you can you can blow right past that. All that shit is just an exterior anyway. It's overcompensation anyway. You know what I'm saying? But the source that they pulling from is the simps on the internet. That's where they get that confidence from. It's not real. It's fake. But that's the source that they pulling from. Because when you take that phone away, it goes away. You see what I'm saying? When they log out, that goes away. Now you have to deal with somebody face-to-face. See, I had to deal with men face-to-face to get that. You feel me? So, fellas, stop thirsting over women on the internet. We got to stop doing that. 
I'm saying we because I'm included, but I don't do that. But I'm going to say we is because it's all inclusive. Stop thirst if we have to stop doing that, bro. Because that's like the main gasoline that's making this fire go out of control. Stop doing it. I'm telling you, if, if all us got together for one day and say no validation, nobody give no validation to no woman on the internet, they'll turn this motherfucker upside down. They act like they don't care about y'all. Women act like they they just do without you, and uh, and they could just don't do fuck men. We can do without them. They don't mean anything. We don't need them to live. They act like that because they take you for granted because you give yourself away so easy. And it's a hundred of you in her inbox. If everybody took that away just for one fucking day, I I think I'm gonna push for the next few years for us all to get together, all men one day, no validation, we ain't gonna like no. Pay. They, I'm telling you, they will lose their fucking mind. They'll damn near start. They'll damn near be the next day. They'll be naked on this bitch trying to get somebody attention, bro. If all us said, you know what, when every man say I ain't liking no pictures, I ain't jumping no inbox, I ain't sliding it, they'll start getting naked for that attention. I could promise you that. They need that shit. They act like they don't care about you. They act like they can do without it. They need you, bro. Just like you need them. You see how y'all like tuned into this world? They need you just like you need them, bro. They human just like you. Them same desires you have, that same validation that you long for, they long for it too. Don't ever forget that. Stop simping on the internet. Now, that ends that. Those are the symptoms of simping. If you're a simp, if you see anything on here, if you need help changing it, changing it. If you need help changing it, change it. If you need more help, excuse me. If you need help changing it, hit me up. If you don't, change it. That's what I meant to say. If you need more help, hit me up on King Dre, not King Dreism, SaverBroAcademy.com or send me a DM on Instagram at KingDreism.com. Follow me on all uh, social media at KingDreism.com, by the way. Saver Bro Academy for all your game needs. I got all my courses there. You can... um. Even book me for a consultation on Saver Bro Academy or send, uh, sending me a DM or e emailing me. All of the links, by the way, to all of this stuff is in the description of this video or podcast. All of the links. So hit me up. Also, don't forget April 4th, 2022, Ultimate Summit, Ultimate Ladies Man Summit. Uh, the, we'll be open for enrollment. Teach you. We're going to walk you through the game. Point A, point C. Attraction, dating, and love. You understand what I'm saying? This is going to be something that you do not want to miss out. I'm telling you. Um, I'll give you more details on that as the time approaches. But anyway, this is none other than your ga gracious game advisor. This has been episode five, I think. Yeah, episode five. The symptoms of simping. I'm your gracious game advisor, King Dre. I'm gone. <laughs>